Welcome to Festool TV. My name is Frank and I will show you today how to craft through dovetail joints. As you can see, this is an optimal and positive joint. This is where the craftsman can prove his technical skills. We need two templates for the manufacturing of this kind of joint. The template for the dovetail joint, or dovetail form, and the template for the teeth form. Both templates are mounted to the base unit. We begin with the dovetail template. It is mounted here in the holding fixture. For the exact fit of the template, you will line it through the windows with these arrows. Afterward, it is fixed with the holding screws on the left and the right sides. Now I can swivel the ensemble upwards by this swivel unit and have a clear view of the top system. Which is where I can make the SZ20 setting. In the front and rear area, we have clamping bars to fix my workpiece. With long workpieces, for example cabinet sides, I have the option to remove the screw in the middle in order to work until a depth of 60 centimeters. When you work on the sides of drawers, you previously have to adjust the spacing. For my example here, I have two lighter and two darker woods in order to make the contrast more visible. I have already marked the work pieces so that I know where to put each piece. I will start with the dark woods. The dovetails, which are marked with an S, are cut on these sides. The ensemble is mounted to the stops by the help of these marks and fixed with the black holding screws. In the rear area, I use the splutter woods. I need them to prevent my wood from tearing in the rear area while I cut it. The splitter wood is also inserted from the back and pressed against the workpiece. You can see that I can work on both sides at the same time here. This means that I can cut on the left as well as on the right side. As soon as the splinter wood is mounted, I can align the workpiece, in this case the side to the splinter wood. Now the ensemble is in an exact angle. All screws and rotary knobs are tightened now. The upper part is lowered and fixed as well. Now we need the cutter. Here we have mounted an OF1010 with the corresponding dovetail cutter. The cutter is adjusted to the SZ20 system. In addition to that, I have mounted the corresponding copy ring, which is tailored to the template system. Now you position the cutter and lower it until it touches the workpiece. Then you set the cutter depth. I do this with a crossbar, which I clamp in here. After I have determined and set the cut depth, only the connection to the power supply and the extraction hood are missing. It is advisable to use a dust extraction hood with a VS600 system to extract the cutting chips. After connecting the cutter, nach unten fahren, 
I go down and follow the contours of the template with my cutter. In order to be able to work on the other side, I turn around the workpiece. This means that we swivel the unit upwards and loosen the workpieces by opening the rotary knobs. The workpiece is turned to the other side and aligned again to the splinter wood. The second wood is clamped in on the other side. Now I cut the left and the right sides of the workpieces. So, und das gleiche Spiel wieder von vorne. The cutting of the dovetails is now complete. Now I take away the extraction hood because I have to remove the template for the teeth. I swivel up again and loosen the rotary knobs. I lay the workpiece aside. The splinter wood has to be removed as well for the setting with the teeth template. Now I loosen both black holding screws and mount the template for the teeth. Doing this, you should be careful that the arrows in the windows are exactly aligned to the edge. Just as important is the eccentric wheel that needs to lie flat on the base unit. If needed, the fit can be adjusted here as well. The closer the template is moved to the base unit, the tighter the fit. The farther the template is moved, the lighter the fit. Now we swivel the template upwards and clamp in the other workpieces. I pay attention once more to my angle marks and fix the workpiece on both sides again. I also press the splinter wood with a lot of pressure to the workpiece. As soon as the splinter wood is aligned, I align the work pieces to the splinter wood. in order to ensure the angle accuracy. Now I tighten the holding screws and swivel down the template. Now I prepare the cutter. I have mounted a spiral cutter to cut the teeth. Here we also have a copy ring, which I will run along the template. 
The depth is set again. I lower the cutter to the workpiece and lock the black rotary knob. Afterwards, I take our side wood again and put it in between here. Now I have once again determined the depth. Now I mount the extraction hood again and I am ready to cut the teeth. It is advisable to always cut from the front and slowly through the material. Never cut to the outside, because the material will tear in the front. This side is cut now, so I begin work on the other side. The workpiece is turned around again. The right workpiece to the left side and the left workpiece to the right side, as my signs tell me. The swivel unit is lowered and clamped again. The cutting is repeated once more. The extraction hood can now be removed. The woods are unclamped. We control the fit of our work. I orientate myself on the angle signs. They are matched and I get a fully composed workpiece. As you can see, the teeth stick out a few tenths of a millimeter. However, they can still be sanded down easily. If the symmetry of the teeth does not fit, I have the option to alter the ensemble some more. I hope that you had fun watching Festool TV. See you next time when it's once again Festool TV. Yours, Frank. Thank you.